Welcome to Financial Focus, brought to you by Gulf Coast Financial Services founder and CEO, John Kirkendall. John and his team of financial, legal, and tax professionals have provided North Florida savers and investors sound, comprehensive financial guidance for over 25 years, helping you to achieve important life and planning goals. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, and tune in for more financial focus by visiting gulfcoastfinancial.net. And welcome into Financial Focus brought to you by the best of the best in financial services, six years and running as named by the Lake City Reporter, Gulf Coast Financial Services founder and CEO John Kirkendall here with us, providing us some guidance and a common sense approach to planning for our financial future. We need that in this uh, world where the, the common sense seems to be lacking, John, kind of crazy, confusing financial world at times. Well, you know, it is, Peter, and there's a lot of misinformation out there. And uh, a lot of people don't know about the regulations and the requirements. And so we're really happy that we can uh, help them with Medicare, Social Security, and, and also income planning that we talk about every week. Uh, that's one of the things that we really like to do. So we're, uh, we're excited. We're real happy that we've been named best of the best uh, for so long. It uh, gives us a little bit of a reward for the hard work we do. And I really appreciate my staff and all the things they do for us. Now, a lot of hard work because as a whole, Americans have done a reasonable job in in accumulating wealth. We've been using the tools that we have available. We talked about one of the main ones last week, the 401k. But the number one concern once we leave the paycheck behind is running out of money. And so that tool that we use, the 401k, doesn't really constitute a plan. And we began to talk about that last week, but this week diving into how to actually formulate that plan and specifically, John, the risks that it helps us to address. So having that written retirement income plan, largely something that you have noticed is missing from most people's portfolios. Yeah, you know, Peter, so long we, uh, we, we focused on asset allocation. And if, you're, if your portfolio is allocated properly, um, then you know, we would, we would have a, a, a safe retirement. And for so long, we used that 4% rule that was given to us back in the 90s, which said that, you know, if you took 4% out of your account, you could have a, and had a 50-50 mix, 50% bonds, 50% stocks, you had a reasonably good chance of having enough money to, to last through your retirement. The problem with that was, was, as you know, back in the 90s, I can remember in 1991, a one-year CD was 6.9%. Right, right, now, yeah. <laughs> a yeah. Little, little different interest rate environment today. Yeah, I mean, I, I what, a half a percent for a one-year CD, if you could get a one-year CD? Uh, most people just tell you to put it in the money market account. So um, interest rates have changed, and that whole concept has changed. And what people don't understand is while we're working, we have a plan. The plan is, is that every week or two weeks or once a month, I'm going to get paid. And out of that check, I'm going to pay my bills. I'm going to have my entertainment money and I'm going to save a little. But when we get into retirement, what we don't understand is that therefore the plan becomes, how am I going to make my money last as long as I need to 30, 35 years? And how am I going to do that without an income plan so that I know that I'm not going to crash my portfolio before I, I, before I die? And, you know, it used to be back in the back, I can remember back in 2000 to 2010, maybe most people came in and we all wanted to retire at 55. We all wanted to leave money to our kids and our grandkids. And now the people that come in, I'm trying to talk them into retiring at 65 or 70 and they're not worried about the kids. They're just worried about having enough money to last while they're retired. Yeah. And, and so the, the concerns have obviously changed back then, John talking 15, 20, 25 years yeah. ago, it seemed like all financial plans projected out that we would have more than enough income and leave those kids and grandkids with like $3 million to yeah. inherit. <laughs> obviously that has not come true for many of us. We've got a little bit more challenges right. these days, uh, but, but that's the assumptions and that's the projections that were being used. Is it fair to say, though, John, that when we are working and we have that paycheck, that asset allocation 
is the critical model when we're contributing and deferring, whereas when we're actually utilizing the money, using those investment accounts to supply what has always been supplied by the paycheck, that the income allocation and the income plan is, is the critical component there. Well, that's right, Peter. While we're working and we've got a paycheck coming in, we want to make sure that our our money is working for us as much as we can get it to work. So we want our asset allocation to be strong. We want to monitor it. We want to make sure that the sectors that we're in are providing the returns. We're more concerned about returns. When we retire and we get to the income plan, we're more concerned about how do I protect my money but at the same time, I have to have growth because I'm going to be living longer. Inflation's going up. You know, the, the largest segment of the population right now growth is in centurions, people who are over the age of 100. If you look at the graph, it's unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I was astonished when I looked at the graph the other day and saw this projection of how many centurions we'd have in the United States. Uh, it's crazy. So, we're looking now. A, a lot of them down here in Florida too. Right? <laughs> yeah, bunch of them here. Yeah, and there's there, a lot of we got a lot of them over 100 already. But you know the thing is, is that when we retire at 65 or 70, we've got to remember that we may have another 30, 35, or 40 years that we're going to need income. So it was. Uh... I think Ponce de Leon was looking for the fountain of youth in Florida. Maybe it was just the fountain of longevity uh, that, that he should have been looking for. Um, different needs for our money and yes. a different style of planning, though. And you've, you've talked about how money is generally not the best multitasker, so we have to assign it a specific mm -hmm. job, a specific role. Could we perhaps back up a little bit here, and could we begin with, with just an understanding? Could you define what constitutes an income plan for us? So maybe we could begin to know if we've got one or not? Well, when we retire, we have a, we have a pot of money. And out of that pot of money, we're going to have to live and pay all of our expenses. So what we want to know is we want to know what our monthly bills are, what our annual bills are, put those all together into a monthly budget. Then we want to look at discretionary income. What am I going to do? You know, as Tom Hagnia says, we have three stages of retirement the go-go years, the no-go, the slow-go years, and the no-go years. So in those go-go years of early retirement, we want to put in there, like if we, we want a vacation, we want to plan ahead for that. If I'm going to need a new car in three years or two years, if I want a boat, uh, you know, I had a, a client the other day who wanted a camper. And so we had to put 35000 into the plan. So what that constitute is we look at how much money we've got, what our needs are, and then we figure out how we're going to pull that income out of that pot and not have the pot crack as we go through retirement. Now, not everybody wants to retire from their career and then become a full-time financial planner for themselves, advisor, paying attention to their money 24 hours a day, seven days a week, constantly. But having that income plan, that's what allows us not to have to do that. Right, John? That's right, Peter. And as we said before on this show, this is a leave it living, breathing document. If you're going to make a change to it, once we get it set, we want to put that into the plan. We're going to look at your taxes. We're going to look at Social Security. We're going to look at Medicare. We're going to look at all the items that you're going to need during retirement to have you the best retirement that you can get. And we want to make sure that while we have asset allocation, we also have income allocation, as you, as you said. You know, I want to have predictable, sustainable income while I'm retired. And how are the majority of people that you speak to planning to generate this income before they come and talk to you? Do, uh, do most people have that income plan component? No. no. Every, everyone we talk to comes to us with a pot of money. This is my retirement account. Uh, I want to bring it to you. And so when we say, well, how, how much are you going to need? Well, I, I don't know. I'm just going to pull it out. You know, and, and we, so we have to work with them and show them how that we can build this income plan for them. And, you know, when we get through doing the initial phase of our planning, which is only a, it's like a seven page document, we're going to show them 
how we can do things so that we can tweak that plan and make it better. As I call it, we like to get the red out because red means that my money crashed before I retired, before I was projected to die. And so what we're going to do is we're going to make some changes, move some things around, do better withdrawals from our money uh, and do better asset allocation. And then we're going to come up with this income plan. There's, there's a couple words you used there, and they seem to have different feels to me, even though they may not be uh, a world apart. But budget, emotionally to me, when I hear that word, it feels a little limiting. I can't spend what I want to spend. Spending plan, on the other hand, allows me some freedom to go out and, and, and do the spending. Um, mm -hmm. The written retirement income plan is what bridges the gap between the two so that we're not maybe spending too much and risking future years, nor are we living so frugally and, and conservatively that we've got this pile of money that we could have done more with. Yeah. I mean, the last thing we want to do when we do an income plan is see a legacy of, of a million or $2 million. I mean, most of the legacy that we're looking at when we work out this income plan is anywhere between a hundred to 200,000. I mean, that's really where we're trying to get. But, but so you're that, speaking specifically on the assets that are intended for lifetime purposes. Sometimes this right. process allows us to differentiate to a different basket as well, correct? Oh, sure. And, you know, the thing is, is Peter, is when we're looking at these plans, we, we, it is a spending plan, too, because we're putting in there, if you tell me you want to go to Jerusalem in two years, and it's going to take this much money, or I need to travel to Alaska to see the whales, we're going to stick that in the plan and we're going to plan for it. Now, if you come in to tell me, hey, my travel agent said I got to pay for this in advance and I've got two couple of ways of paying for it, then we're going to sit down and work with you and make sure that tax wise, we pull the money out of your account to give you the best tax advantage. And that's all part of the process. This thing isn't something we can put together and forget. It's something that we have to, we plan with constantly every time we change it or come up with a major expenditure. Now, you've mentioned a couple factors here, John, the market, the amount of income we're withdrawing, the withdrawal rate, taxes and inflation. These are all risks that generally you or I or anyone as an individual can't really control, but with that written retirement income plan, we can address them and have a little bit more of an element of control based on the level of exposure that we have to them. And, and then we can map out what may happen and, and how each one of those things could potentially affect us, correct? Well, sure, Peter. And what we're going to do is we're going to take in consideration uh, inflation in the plan because your income today is not going to be what you're going to need in five years. So what we're going to do is have a growing income for you based on inflation, um, using the assets that we've got and making sure that the plan will give you the best retirement. We're not trying to, you know, it's not one of those things where you bring me your money and I want to grow it and keep it because I, I make more on you if I keep your money. We want you to be able to spend it and live up with it. But, you know, without an income plan, I'm going to go and spend too much money in the early years. I'm going to pull money out. I'm going to pay my house off as an example. And I'm not concerned about the taxes. I just want to pay the house off. All of a sudden, my Medicare Part B costs more. My, my, uh, I got more income tax for one thing. And my Medicare Part D costs more. And more of my Social Security is taxable. So I've created this huge tax mess for myself because all I was concerned with was doing one thing. Plus, I've also now jeopardized the remaining of, of my years because I've taken this huge pot of money out up front. And that's not the way we want it. We want to plan it and do it right. So again, having that written retirement income plan, something that not a large number of the folks that you initially talked to have up front, uh, a good portion of savers and investors do not have this specific component of the plan. This shows us measurable benefits in being able to address what is essentially Murphy's law, what can go wrong into retirement. Well, that's right. And, and we're going to try to look at every scenario we can uh, and give you the best advice that we can. It's You'd be amazed at how comforting the people feel when we get through doing one of these and they walk out of the office knowing they have a plan in place 
and this is what the plan is, and that we're going to review it every year, and they're going to get the best results that we can possibly get. Now, I think we would be a little remiss, John, if we did not mention Social Security as part of a retirement income plan, correct? I mean, that's yeah. a big component of it. You, you help people with that area so that it lessens the stress and strain and, and reliance on the personal assets. Well, you know, ever since we did away with the four, with the defined benefit plans of pensions, and we started the 401k plans and the deferred comp, we, we, the social security check is your biggest pension, if you will, that check will, will give you that sustainable income. Now, as you and I both know, and we found out, it's not going to keep up with inflation. But it is a good check that's coming in every month, first of the month, third of the month, whatever, and it's going to keep me going. For 40% of all retirees, it's all they have coming in every month. And so the Social Security check is very important. And what we do is we run that your, through our software and we show you where the maximum benefit is and what the benefit is if you're going to take it now. So many people just say, hey, I'm 62. I want my check before the government runs out of money and I'm willing to take that 27% haircut. That's may not be the right thing for everybody, but we want to make sure they plan it out. At least they have an idea of what they're giving up. Well, nobody knows the exact day they're going to go. So therefore nobody can tell us the absolute best way to claim nope. and collect social security when we're making that decision. But John, over the average life expectancy with that component of the retirement income plan alone, uh, the social security report and analysis. Can you quantify that for a dollar value and the difference that you have seen that make over somebody's retirement? Well, I mean, you know, it's as much as a million or a million and a half dollars in some cases and more. I have seen this, this wife and the husband's social security because we maximize those actually take up 60 to 70 percent of their the, their living benefit, I'm um, the living expenses each month. And so all we have to do is pull the rest out of their assets. Now, they didn't probably didn't, you know, have a million or $2 million saved up, but they were able to live quite comfortably because we did a good job with social security. And of course, the better decision we make there, the less that we're going to need to pull from our personal assets and, and therefore lower in the risk of running out of money. That's part of the written retirement income plan, but the rest is, is how to generate that income sustainably, predictably, durably over the years of retirement. And it is part of the financial focus plan. So maximizing social security, getting that written retirement income plan, and then looking at investments and taxation and healthcare and legacy, all of those things, part of that financial focus plan. Pick up the phone if you would like to get that. Similar plans can easily go upwards of a thousand to several thousands of dollars. John and his team there at Gulf Coast Financial Services uh, charge nothing for that. No cost, no obligation. They want to help anybody who is serious about planning and serious about your financial future. Have a plan or just double check your current plan. Make sure that you've got this important component of the plan. Uh, set, uh, no, 386. <laughs> this this important, you make me laugh now, <laughs> no, 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 porky pig, this porky. important, this important component of the plan. Give them a call. If you'd like to take them up on that offer, 386-755-9018. That's 386-755-9018. If you're listening to the program today, you can also always go to the website, golfcoastfinancial.net. If you're viewing the podcast, you can click on the link below the video in the description for the, the website uh, to get to the blog, to get to any of the additional resources. And of course, to request the, the process to get going with your financial focus plan. Uh, John, it's, it's an often confusing financial world. One of the biggest questions, how much do I need to retire? How much can I spend from my retirement savings? This written retirement income plan is really the process to answer those, those important questions. Yeah, Peter, you know, everybody's number is different. And that's the, that's the magic of this is some people can retire very comfortably with a half a million dollars. Some people have 2 million and they can't retire comfortably. So everybody's number is different. This plan gives you an individual plan that will tell you what we need to do for you in retirement. And I know you sent us a little math quiz and I, I like that one that says, you know, if you, if you paid no taxes, on your retirement savings during your working career, how much will you pay in retirement? 
And you're, it's hundred percent of all the money you withdraw from it. And a lot of people don't realize that, but you're going to pay taxes on every dollar. And with our sliding scale, you can get into another tax bracket very easily. Yeah, the, the math has been uh, a source of some some difficult uh, discussions over the past year as more and more parents have been stay at home teachers as well. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, the, the retirement uh, math problems, if you will, don't get any easier. So there's a lot of, of math that goes in that. But luckily, we've got John Kirkendall and his team there at Gulf Coast Financial Services. They'll help us through some of those, those math equations. On the program today, talked about one of the most important parts of the financial planning process and that is specifically for retirement, the written retirement income plan. And if you're not sure if you have a written retirement income plan, you probably don't. And you probably owe it to yourself to, to double check on that and, and make sure you get one in place because that's what's going to give you that confidence to spend throughout retirement. Give John and his team a call 386-755-9018, 386-755-9018. John, we always appreciate your time here on Financial Focus. Thank you, Peter. It was great to be here. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, and tune in for more financial focus by visiting GolfCoastFinancial.net. The information presented on this program is provided for informational purposes only, without warranty of accuracy, completeness, or suitability for a particular purpose. This program is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, legal, or tax advice. This information is general in nature and not specific enough to be construed as advice. You should not make any decision based on the information presented on this program without independent consultation with an appropriately licensed professional or competent advisor. Investment in securities or the market involves a potential risk for loss of principal. Trading, therefore, may not be suitable for all listeners. Annuity guarantees are based only on the financial strength and claims paying ability of the issuing company. Withdrawals of growth from annuities may be taxable as ordinary income in the year it is taken. Individuals should review contracts for specific details of the product's features and costs. Early withdrawals may subject the owner to penalties, fees, or taxes. John Kirkendall is registered with and securities are offered through Kovac Securities, Inc., member FINRA SIPC, found online at www.kovacsecurities.com. Advisory services are offered through Gulf Coast Financial Services, Inc., a registered investment advisor in Florida. Gulf Coast Financial Services, Inc. is not affiliated with with Kovac Securities, Inc. or Kovac Advisors, Inc. Past performance is not indicative of future results. All investing involves risk. Investment decisions should be based on your own goals, time horizon, and tolerance for risk. Due to various factors, including changing market conditions and or applicable laws, the content may no longer be reflective of current opinions or positions.